This is the AI Box Lite from One Car Stereo, and it was made for folks who have wired only Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but wish they could ditch the cord and use it all wirelessly. It's a simple plug and play device. You plug it into the USB port you normally plug your phone into, connect it via Bluetooth, and that's basically it. Your setup is now wireless. Oh, and you get Netflix and YouTube on this thing, which is pretty cool, but using it can be a little bit quirky. More on that later. Now, full disclaimer, One Car Stereo did send this to me for free to test out, but I'm under no obligation to provide a positive re review. And while I do think it's cool, I don't have all positive things to say about it. At 180 bucks as of this video, if you would have asked me a month ago if I'd be willing to shell out that kind of money for wireless CarPlay, I probably would have said no. But having used this thing in my Crosstrek for the last month, I admit I would totally miss it if I were to lose it, and I would honestly seriously consider spending that kind of money to get it back. Whether or not this is something for you, I believe is going to boil down to two things. One, what you normally use the phone for in your car, and two, how much value you place on wireless connectivity. I'm not trying to sell you on this thing, but I do want to share with you what it has to offer, pros and cons, and my experiences with it so far. I plugged the AI Box Lite into the USB-A port I normally plug my phone into in my 2019 Subaru Crosstrek, left the box in the center console, and haven't really touched it since. What this got me was wireless CarPlay, Netflix, and YouTube, all on my factory wired-only head unit. Of course, this means through CarPlay, I was able to wirelessly pull up maps, place and answer calls, talk to Siri, stream audiobooks, and stream music through things like Amazon Music. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but I already have all that. I just have to plug my phone in. And you'd be right. Aside from also getting Netflix and YouTube, the only real value-adding feature here is the ability to connect wirelessly. And though it doesn't sound like much, I'll tell you, it's actually pretty convenient. Nowadays, I just hop in the car, leave my phone in my pocket, and I'm good to go. Unless I need to charge it, in which case I just toss it on my car chi wireless charger and carry on still fully wireless. Overall, slowly eliminating cords from my everyday life has been quite nice. The unit does take a bit to turn on and connect. On average, it takes about 60 seconds after the car is started to get up and running. This includes the unit starting up as well as connecting to the phone. This might be a little annoying if you're in a hurry, but all in all, it hasn't bothered me that much. One thing that does bother me a bit, however, is what seems like decreased contrast in the video coming from the AI box versus what you get when you're wired. For example, here's Google Maps displayed wirelessly. It and even Apple Maps show white roads on a light gray background. Not the most contrasty thing to begin with. And I noticed it was hard to distinguish the roads from the background in daylight display in bright daylight when using the AI box. For comparison, here's that same view when wired, and you can see the contrast is improved, the roads are easier to see, and the overall image quality is just sharper. If you're using turn-by-turn -turn navigation where the route is highlighted in a dark color, like blue, then this is less of an issue. But when using maps to just drive around, I found it a little bit hard to see from time to time. Now, I like to use Waze as a default map app, and this did not have that problem. Waze's UI has higher contrast to begin with, so the lower contrast video coming from the AI box didn't prove to be a problem. In night mode, all the map apps I tested seemed to display just fine and were easy to read. Your mileage may vary, of course. For all I know, this display gripe could just be a quirk unique to the factory display of a 2019 Subaru Crosstrek, but I figured it was worth noting out anyway. As far as having Netflix and YouTube goes, it's kind of a mixed bag. First, you probably shouldn't be watching either while you're driving, but if you're trying to entertain passengers, just want to listen to the audio, or watch something while you're parked, then it's a pretty cool feature to have. From the home screen, you can choose one or the other and log in like you would on any other device. My screen may be touchscreen, but it's still pretty small, and it would seem that both the YouTube and Netflix apps on the AI box weren't necessarily made for a mobile device. You can see here, the YouTube interface looks more like it belongs in a web browser and a large monitor than it does on a 7-inch mobile head unit. The controls are small and a bit difficult to use, and I think using a finger to scroll on a car radio just doesn't give you quite the same pleasurable user experience as it does on a phone or a tablet. Nonetheless, it is navigable, and when you get to something you want to play, the playback is pretty good. Since it's playing back audio and video, I don't get the same kind of audio latency I would get when watching videos on, say, an iPad, but playing the audio through the Count's sound system. The same goes for Netflix. The UI here seems more at home on a larger screen than in a car. Navigation can be a bit clunky using your finger, but when you get to a show, it'll play. I did experience some buffering and freezing issues from time to time, though. For example, when selecting The Good Place, which is a great show, by the way, it started to play, then the video froze, but the audio kept going. To arrive as an ex-boyfriend of yours. Okay, that's, I get it, thank you. A little bit right, Muslims a little... Bit. Okay, that's, I get it, thank you. Um, Tapping back 10 seconds seemed to set it straight, but it is something you should expect to happen from time to time, as that's what happened to me. The only other real quirk I noticed with the AI box light was once, while I was driving down a busy road, the unit seemed to have detected another phone, an Android phone that wasn't me. 
It splashed up a QR code in what looked like a connection step, and the damn thing didn't offer me an option to exit or back out. I ended up hitting the home button to bring me back to the head unit's home screen, and I was able to get back into the car play from there without any further issue. Aside from that, the interface is fairly intuitive. I deliberately didn't read the instructions before connecting this thing to test how natural connecting and navigating it would be. When you tap the screen, this non-native icon set appears, allowing you to move between the AI box's features. It's not an overly complicated device, so I didn't think it was too hard to figure out. A couple things did end up throwing me for a loop, though, that had me not only reading the instructions, but emailing the company as well. First, I couldn't figure out how to change the temperature measure from Celsius to Fahrenheit. The response I got from the manufacturer was that the latest UI with Celsius is unable to be switched to Fahrenheit, which is weird, but I don't really need that feature anyway. Most of the time, my view is showing a map or media, like an audiobook or music, and I have a temperature readout on my dash already. Next, there was this factory settings menu that seemed to be a dead end, asking for some kind of password or pin to access. When I asked about that, the response I got was, quote, Factory settings will wipe away all apps, including YouTube and Netflix and settings. Therefore, we would like users to contact us to be guided to restore the factory settings. Again, a little weird, but not something I imagine needing anytime soon anyway, so I'll let that one slide. I'm admittedly getting more into the weeds here than I need to, simply for the sake of a thorough review. Uh, I'm honestly not going to be using this thing for anything more than navigation, music, and phone calls. I mean, that's all I really use the phone for while I'm driving, so wired or otherwise, this thing still meets my needs. With that said, on a scale of must-have to novelty, I'm going to place this thing pretty much right in the middle. Again, it's going to come down to what you need to use your phone in the car for and how much value you place on wireless connectivity. After using this for a while, I seem to have underestimated how convenient being wireless really is, at least to me anyway. If you'd like to learn more about this device, you can check out their website. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if you liked this video and found it informative, hit that like button. It really goes towards helping growing channels like mine more than you might think. Thank you for watching, and until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante saying keep on tinkering and keep on learning. Have a good one. I'm gonna kill that cicada. <laughs>